Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, God's people. Good morning, everyone. Today is the day the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. Amen. Good morning, all of God's men, all of God's women, all of God's children. It's good to be here on today. Amen. Amen. It's good to see everyone. Well, you know who I am. I am the proclaimer. I have a few announcements. If I could just take, have your attention for a few minutes, please. We do ask that you please keep all our sick and shut-in and bereaved families in your prayers. ZBC devotion, the virtual devotion is the second and fourth Tuesday each month at 6.30 p.m. Carrington Nursing Home Ministry is the third Sunday each month at 2 p.m. If anyone who would like to see Meals on Wheels receive them, please see Sister Marlene Veen. Clearwater, Florida, just steps from the beach, Sunday, July 28th to Thursday, August the 1st, 2024, $625 per person, $125 monthly, February through June, includes motor coach transportation, Marriott Residence Inn, and a full complimentary breakfast and door prize. Some local attractions are available. See Sister Wendy Burns or Gail Johnson. ZBC, Zion Kinsale Ministries, Generation That Will Obey Youth Ministry, presents Sunday, March the 31st, Easter Egg Hunt. Games, food, Easter skit will be here. The Easter Egg Hunt will follow morning worship. Sunday school is, sorry, morning worship is at 1020. I think I was told there is no Sunday school. No Sunday school. Celebration Banquet for Reverend Gernard E. Reed, Saturday, April the 20th at 5 p.m. at Mount Vernon Baptist Church Annex, Jane, 269 James Walk Road in Whitestone, Virginia. Please RSVP by April the 5th. If you would like to pre-order K-Ken cookies, please see Sister Nori or Kaylin. The, it is $15 a dozen, plenty of flavors to choose from. We do still ask that if you could still remain seated and not leave, if you can help it, there may be something that you may need to hear during altar call. Missionary meeting will be here at ZBC. It's the Friday night, um, April the 12th at 7 p.m. We are still in the month of March. We are celebrating our March birthdays. You can hold your applause until I read all the names. First up, we celebrated Mr. Bobby Young. His birthday was March the 3rd. We also celebrated Miss Diane Fauntleroy. Her birthday was March the 12th. Today, today, today is Roni Monroe. That is Dexter and Tawanda's son. He is celebrating today. The baby girl, Kinsley, her birthday is today. And also, Sister Lady Adrienne Biggins' birthday is today. Also, Michael Henry's birthday is today. Michael, are you in the building? Raise your hand and let them know you're celebrating today. It's your birthday. The Lord said he is going to be born, and today is your birthday. Amen. Sheila Smith celebrated on March the 21st. Edward Murphy, a.k.a. Dude. Is Dude in the building? Well, his birthday. What? <laughs> his birthday was March the 21st. How old were you, Edward? Wow, he's 10 years old, y'all. Edward, happy birthday. Edward, Miss Marlene Veen, her birthday the 20th of March. Happy birthday, Miss Marlene. Miss Janie Thornton celebrated March the 20th. Noriel Gray will celebrate on the 26th. Gladys Henry will celebrate on the 28th. And we all know he stands and waits for me to say his name because he's probably going to have, again, a new dinner jacket on. It's probably going to be velvet, suede, leather. Mr. Richard Jones' birthday will celebrate on the 31st. Miss Tita Ball celebrates on the 31st. 
Denise Fisher Matthews will celebrate on the 31st, and Miss Ruth Ann Hood will also celebrate on the 31st. So happy birthday to all the March babies. We also have one, one wedding anniversary. It is Mr. and Mrs. Albert Fauntleroy. Amen. She still keeps a smile on his face. Bless her heart. All right, so y'all know what time it is. It is the PowerPoint, the push, the nugget. It's just a question. It's just a minute just to encourage you as it encourages me. The Lord spoke. We talked at the table where I usually sit. His question was to me, who are you? Who am I? I want to know. I want to know, Zion, who are you? I want to know, Tanaya, who are you? I want to know, Richard, who are you? Who am I? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. First Corinthians 12, 27. I am a member of Christ's body. Ephesians 1, 3 through 8 says, I have been chosen by God and adopted as his child. How does God give you identity? If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, your core identity is that you are a child of God. He has predestined us to be adopted as sons through Jesus Christ for himself according to the good pleasures of his will. Who am I? Who are you? Let me give you an example. Moses. Okay, we know about Moses. Meeting God at the burning bush. God asked him to do a task. Y'all know what that task was. He told him to tell Pharaoh to what? To what? Let my people go. But Moses, like most of us, felt like, who am I? I can't, I can't do that. God, are you sure you want me? You want me most to tell the people to let, to tell Pharaoh to let your people go? God says, you are who I say you are. I will be with you. Who am I? I am a child of God. So say it with confidence. God is with me. I am a new creation. That's who I am. I am a friend of Jesus. That's who I am. I am justified and redeemed no matter what you may think of me, no matter what you may see while I'm standing here. I am who God says I am. And your opinion, not to be real mean about it, really don't really matter. It doesn't matter because I'm still standing in the place that God has me standing at this very moment. I am a branch of the true vine. Who are you? But God, you know, I've been dealing with some things, and I'm not really sure if I can handle what you have put on my plate. God says, who are you then? I said you are who I said you are. But God, you know, these people, they look at me, and they want to bring up things I've done, and they know about what I used to be, and they, used, they know what I used to do. But God says, Tiffany. You are who I said you are. I belong to God. I don't belong to you. I don't belong to you. You can think, like I said, and say and bring up whatever you want to bring up. But at the end of the day, I am who God says I am. Well, God, well, you have this microphone, and she's a proclaimer, and she's doing this. It doesn't matter. Because when I turn around, and come back to Front Street, I am who God says I am. Despite of what you may think of your family and your friends, whether you come to Zion or not, be who God says that you are because he made you in the perfect image of himself. Yes, we're going to go through things, but you are still who God says you are. Yes, tears are going to run down your face, 
but God says, you are who I said you are. God, my heart breaks sometimes when I think about things and people in this world. But God says, you are who I said you are. But God, you want me to carry this Bible? You want me to be a school teacher? You want me to be a Sunday school teacher? Yes, I do. You are who I said you are. So at the end of today, Keep in mind that no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what it looks like when the lights are out, when the sun goes down, when it rains, the cloud is over your head, you are still who God says that you are. Amen, amen. So that's my nugget. I have a card to read really quick. It's a thank you card. Thank you for all of your thoughtfulness. And this is from the beautiful Miss Edna Crabb. Amen, amen. So I'm going to turn it over now. We have scripture, communion. You are who God says you are. Amen. Great morning, everyone. And we're going to confidently step into who God says that we are. We are sons. He calls us sons. We are his. We are redeemed. Y'all acting like y'all don't know. We are sons of God. And so today we are stepping in that position and we are commemorating and celebrating and communing as we remember our redeemer and the right that his obedience brought us into when we received him as our Lord. And so the Bible says that in the final hours before our Savior would lay down his life, that we may leave, live there in the upper room surrounded by disciples, the Bible says, according to Luke 22, I'm reading this from the Message Bible, it says, when it was time, he sat down, all the disciples with him, and said, You've no idea how much I have looked forward to eating this Passover meal with you before I enter my time of suffering. It's the last one I'll eat until we eat, until we all eat it together in the kingdom of God. And taking the cup, he blessed it. And then he said, Take this and pass it along among you. As for me, I'll, I'll not drink wine again until the kingdom of God arrives. And taking the bread, he blessed it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Eat it in memory of me. He did the same with the cup after suffering saying, this cup is the new covenant written in my blood the blood poured out for you. And then Paul picks this up in 1 Corinthians, echoing Jesus' instructions by declaring, let me go over with you again exactly what goes on in the Lord's Supper and why it is so centrally important. I received instructions from the master himself and passed them on to you. The master Jesus on the night of his betrayal took bread, having given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he did the same thing with the cup. This cup is my blood, my covenant with you. Each time you drink this cup, remember me. What you must solemnly realize is that every time you eat this bread and every time that you drink this cup, you reenact in your words and your action the death of the master. You will be drawn back to this meal again and again until the master returns. And you must, ne must never let familiarity breed content. Content that we never let the familiarity cause us not to think that this celebration, that this commemoration is worthless. That we never let the familiarity of it strip us from its significance. 
This is a sacred moment between the sons and the Savior that God himself welcomes us to. And our Savior, he says, as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. And so for a few moments, what does your heart and your head right now need to remember about our Savior? Are you remembering that we don't have a covenant with death, but we got a covenant with life? Does your heart need to be, be reminded that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Does your wondering mind and every tormenting thought need to be reminded that with his body and his blood, he gave me his mind? And therefore, I have the mind of Christ. And so I'm choosing today against all odds to let this mind, God, be in me, which is also in Christ Jesus. Are we remembering all that he secured with his body and his blood? Does that sickness need to remind, be reminded that there is a strike for that? Does the anxiety need to be reminded this morning that my Savior took a strike for that? What does your heart and your mind need to be reminded and remembered this morning about your Savior? Jesus, we thank you that no man could take your life, but willingly you laid it down that we might live. And in this moment, we allow thanksgiving to flow from our hearts as the fruit of our lips as we say thank you. We remember that you were wounded for our transgressions. We hear the witnessing wounds tell us that you were bruised for our guilt and our iniquities and the chastisement that was needful for our peace. It rests upon you and you took the stripes. You allowed your skin to be torn apart, God, that you would share the blood to redeem us. We remember that with that same body and that same blood, your yes and your yield allowed us to be robed in the righteousness of you. We remember that you asked the Father to send us another helper by way of active Holy Spirit who seals us as your guarantee. Oh God, we remember as the sons of God, as the righteousness of God, as your righteous responses in this earth realm, we remember that we are more than conquerors in you and we stand on the absolute authority of your word according to 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 14 and 15 from the Passion Translation that in you, Jesus, in you, God makes his grace available. And not only do you make your grace available, but you have included us as partners in your endless triumph, meaning that you know no defeat. And that when you said it was finished on that cross, yes, God, it sealed everything for us. It meant that it was already won and it was already done. And so we share in this unmistakable aroma of victory through the anointing of God by way of Jesus Christ in your endless triumph. Thank you that this body is blessed and thank you that this blood is blessed to and we say we remember as we become one you may eat and drink yes Lord yes Lord and we thank him and we thank him
Yes, God. Thank God for what has taken place this far. Uh, me, myself, as your worship leader this morning, first I want to say thank you. Thank you for coming out this morning. And uh, what's so good about it, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. And I'm just thankful and I am so grateful this morning to be in God's presence. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but whenever I'm in God's presence, guess what? It's all right with me. Hallelujah. I know I got it going on then. Amen. In Psalms 133, Psalms 133 tells me, it says how good and how pleasant it is for his people, hallelujah, to dwell together in unity. When we all come together in agreement, when we come together in oneness, what a mighty, what a mighty good time. Amen, amen, amen. I'm excited for God to show up. I'm not talking about just because the women is in the house, but when the men take their rightful place. My God, my God, it's all right with me to stand here before my God. And I, I, I feel good this morning. Matter of fact, I lay down feeling good. I woke up feeling good because my God is good. Hallelujah. I don't take him lightly. Hallelujah. <laughs> Tiffany stirred me up enough with just two words. When she said, I am. I am, I am, when you know who you are, when you know who God is, I am, I am, today, this moment, I want you to stand to your feet, and what we're going to do, we're going to bless the name of the Lord, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, just speaking well of him, just to say something, whatever the good, whatever the Lord has done for you, if he's been good to you, say he's good, if he healed you, say you are healed, say something, Open up your mouth and just say something. Hallelujah. He's a great God. Hallelujah. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah. He's awesome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's a sovereign God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's a merciful God. Oh, yes, he is. He's a wonderful Savior. Oh, yes, he is. He kept me. Hallelujah. He healed me. Hallelujah. He restored me. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I don't know about you, but when I think about the goodness of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, he's my shepherd, hallelujah, he supplies all of our needs, hallelujah, open up your mouth, open up your mouth and say something, open up your mouth and say something, don't let the devil put a mother over your mouth, God been good to you, he been good to me, and I tell you, I'm not going to shut my mouth, I ain't going to shut my mouth. I'm telling you, his word, his word, his word. I'm telling you, his word is good to me, y'all. His word is good. He has made my mouth just like a just like a fireball. And that when I think about it, it feels like fire. Fire shot up in my bone. When I think about it, hallelujah. You don't know my story. You don't know my story. You don't know my story. I don't know your story. But what I do know, I serve a God that is able and he's a willing God and what I do know about my daddy he's a faithful God what I do know about my daddy he don't lie he can't lie what I do know about my savior he will if you fall down he will pick you up he will pick you up I'm a witness he picked me up he picked me up y'all he restored my soul he lifted my burden because he is a burden lifter he's a heart fixer y'all he's a mind regulator don't let the devil tell you what you can't do. Because with him, we can do all things. We can do all things. We can do all things. Hallelujah. I'm just his mouthpiece. I'm just his vessel. Hallelujah. 
I'm just being obedient to the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I am a woman of obedience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a mighty God, y'all. He's a mighty, mighty, mighty. And he's a mighty good God, y'all. I can't say too much about my daddy, y'all. Can't say too much about my daddy, y'all. I don't know about you, but it don't matter what you've been through. It don't matter what it looks like. Because I, I, in his word says, yeah, though we might have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But he said, don't feel no evil. Why? Because he's with us. Fear no evil. Denounce that spirit now in the name of Jesus. He didn't give us the spirit of fear. Hallelujah. The hallelujah. But I thank God. I thank God. And it went on and on. He gave us goodness. And he gave us mercy, y'all. Goodness, his grace. His grace. His grace. Come here, goodness and mercy. Come here. Come over here. Come over here. Wait, mercy. Come on over. Come over here. Every time, every time the enemy tried to shut me down. Look at here. I had, I couldn't go down. I couldn't go down. But I had goodness on this side. And I had mercy on this side. I couldn't go down. But every time, every time he tried to knock me down. Every time he tried to knock me down. I would go higher and higher and higher. I said, God, I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Good morning, good morning. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house and praise the Lord. Because he is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. Today I will be bringing you the scripture from Psalms 100. 100, 1 through 5. And it reads, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Let's give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. We can do better than that. For the Lord is good. And his love endures forever. The word is blessed. Amen. Bow your head and go to the, the throne of grace, please. Our Father, who art in heaven, thank you, Lord God. We thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for your brand new mercies and grace. We thank you for a fresh anointing that falls in this place, Lord God. Father God, we ask that you come into this place, Lord God. Blanket this place, Lord God. Touch the hearts, Lord God, that needs to be touched. Let those things that are not of you, Lord God, be cast out, Lord God. Let anything that is going to hinder your spirit today, Lord God, be removed from this place, Lord God. Let you get the glory out of everything that's done today, Lord God. Father God, we honor you and we praise you, Lord God, because you are God and God all by yourself. There is none like you. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, because you didn't have to do what you've done for us thus far, Lord God. We thank you for the mercies and the grace, Lord God. We thank you for not being like man, Lord God. We thank you because you cannot lie. You will not lie, and you will keep us, Lord God. You say you will never leave us nor forsake us. So, God, we ask that you rest and abide in our hearts, Lord God, that this be good ground, Lord God, that the seeds that are coming forth will be planted, Lord God, and you will water them, Lord God, that they may grow, Lord God, that we may be called according to your purpose, Lord God, that you will get the glory and the honor out of everything that we do, Lord. So we thank you on this day. We thank you for your spirit in this place. We thank you for the fresh anointing falling fresh in this place, Lord God. We thank you for the woman of God that's coming forth, Lord God, to give us a word that you have given her, Lord God. Father God, we know that she has meditated on your word and she has done her diligent duty, Lord God. So as she pours out unto us, Lord God, you pour back into her, Lord God. 
We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. We just thank you for waking up this morning because somebody didn't make the roll call this morning, Lord God. So we honor you for that, Lord. We ask, you said we have not because we ask not. So Lord, we ask that you come into this place. You're already here, but we welcome you. We welcome your spirits in this place. We welcome your word in this place. We welcome your, your will in this place. Not our own, but yours, Lord God. Help us lean into your understanding and not our own. You said we have to die daily, Lord God. And that means our flesh, we have to turn it down and we have to proclaim your word in our life. So we honor you. We praise you. We worship you. We magnify you because you are who you are. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for just being you, Father. Because there is none like you. None like you. We turn to so many different things, Lord God. But you said if we put you first, everything else will follow. That means first in everything. Not just first when we're having problems. Not just first when we don't know which way to turn. Not just first when we just don't know what to do. But first in everything. First in everything. First thing in the morning when we open up our eyes because you woke us up. Father God, first in everything that we do, that you may get the glory. Hallelujah. That your people may see you in us. You said that if you be lifted up, you draw all men unto you. So be mindful. Help us to be mindful to give you the glory and lift up your name in everything we do. In our daily walk. In our daily walk, it should, it should implement. It should be what you call it to be. We should be where you want us to be. Then you already said that these things are not our portion. The sickness because of the stripes on his back is not our portion. The depression is not our portion. The hunger is not our portion unless we're hungering for the word of God. You said that you will never see your seed begging for bread. So we know that that's true because your word does not return void. So we honor you on today. We bless your holy name. And we pray that you get everything out of this service that you deserve. That you get the glory. That we are not here for show or fashion. But we're here to be a servant of the most high God. And we will be all, always careful to remember that it's you that has kept us this far. Not by our might, but yours, Lord. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you for your son, Lord God, Jesus, that died on the cross for us, Lord. So when we feel like this world, if we can't handle it no more, we just have to think about what he endured for us. For us to have a life. So we honor you. We praise you and we worship your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is in his master's name, Jesus' name, the Christ, that I pray. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We would like to welcome our visitors in the house on today. If we have anyone visiting with us, amen. I know at least two, not including our guest preacher on today, amen. So we're wondering if you have any words that you would like to share with us now. Amen. So let's stand on our feet. 
Zion family and let's welcome them. Amen. 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 We are certainly glad that you decided to come to Zion on today and worship with us. And I know that you're here in support of Pastor Sheila on today. So we're thankful for you all. Amen. All right, it's giving time. Amen. I'm going to look at the, the letter on the podium today. <laughs> Alicia's coming. Tawanda is coming. Amen. And so are we excited for the house in the house today? Are we excited to be in the house today? Now, because y'all don't sound like you're excited to be in the house today. It's Women's Day today. This is the day that the Lord has made. I mean, we have countless reasons why we can be excited. Amen. Amen. Because when I think about, <laughs> when I look back over my life, when I look back at this morning, when I look back at yesterday, when I look back at last week, I can think of at least a thousand reasons why I can praise them. But I, I can only give you about one right now because I know that he is a provider. Hallelujah. So if he's a provider in your household, that means we can get excited about the declaration that's to come. Amen. We can get excited about it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sis, for making it so easy for me. I can just flow and flow right on into this. Uh, the word of God says that God loves a cheerful giver. Where are my cheerful givers at this morning? Come on, come on, come on. Raise your hand. Raise your arm in the air. Raise them like you just don't. Amen. Amen. Look, 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 look. I hear you, Pastor. Uh, if look, if there's nobody else in this audience is excited about giving today, my husband is so excited. He been talking all week long about this offering he giving today. He be like, babe, 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 don't write the check yet. I got more to give. I got more to give. Don't don't write the check yet, babe. I got more to give. I got more to give. So I think it was just last night. I was like, but can I write the check? And he was like, yeah, I think I'm done. I'm done. So he got up this morning and he was like, I, I'm giving. I'm gonna give today, man. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm like, well, I'm excited too. <laughs> we excited together. So Lord, I look. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's the kind of spirit that we should have with our giving. Amen. Amen. Be excited about it. Give joyfully and give willingly. Uh, uh, over our offertory declarations, uh, I want us to know, look, this is already a settled word in heaven. It's already a done deal. We just have to partner on this side to make it come alive and live in the earth realm. We got to do our part. Amen. So over our offering, let us speak loudly. Let's let us speak boldly and let us speak it from the heart because we believe by faith. We believe this by faith. We, this ain't no lip service. This is heart service. We believe this. So with our offerings raised up high, lifted up high, repeat after me. This year, my finances will soar because I am a tither and a giver. The windows of heaven are open to me and God rebukes the devourer for my sake I am blessed financially I am blessed financially I am blessed financially and receive from God an open window that I can't even contain I do not worry about lack God, knowing God supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory. I do not have a covenant with poverty. 
My covenant is with wealth through God. So I choose to sow cheerfully, generously, and bountifully. For I know God loves a cheerful giver. I am believing him for advancements, raises, promotions, bonuses, great sales, commissions, God ideas, strategies, debts paid off, glory, 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 expenses decrease, blessings and increases, financial freedoms and breakthroughs. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the field. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out. In Jesus' nature, character, and authority, it is so. Amen, amen, amen. giving glory to God this morning, giving God glory and honor. It's a blessing to be able to stand up here this morning just to bless the offering to give back unto God for the rebuilding of his kingdom. I thank God on today because we got a woman in the house that God has anointed and appointed for this hour to bring a rhema word from heaven. So let's look to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you on today, God. We thank you for the grateful hearts, God, that he had to give back to you and to sow back into your kingdom, that, God, that it will be uplifting for the rebuilding of your kingdom. We thank you, God, and we glorify you. We honor you and praise you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 We give God the praise and we thank him for being more than enough.
I worship. All the things that I've been through. Nobody in here can tell your story better than you. You can't feel my pain or what I had to go through to get here. Yeah. Said you'll never understand my praise. So don't try to figure it out. Because my worship, it don't matter what you say, because my worship is real to the Lord. My worship is for real. Yeah.
worship my God? How could I not surrender all unto him? When he tells me he is more than enough, when he said that he is the I am that I am, and because I am because of him, if he said he is the I am, so am I. So I just want to stand and say this, and um, we got, um, I want you to open up your spiritual ears. Uh, this woman of God just want to bring forth the word of God, however you want to teach it, how, however you want to preach it, however the Holy Spirit, um, however she allowed the Holy Spirit to use her. Um, she's about to come forth, and she's going to tell you herself about herself. So again, the Spirit of the Lord said, if you have ears, hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. I believe if you came in here hungry, I believe you're going to get fed, and I believe it's good because God said it's good. If God got his hands on it, he is good. If God got that thing through with it, he, it's good. It's just good. And I'm just going to leave it just like that because I know that my God is good. And can't nobody make me doubt him. Hallelujah. Come forth, come forth. Take a sister through. I'm telling you. Woo. Thank you, praise team and intercessors this morning. And thank you, Bishop and Lady Hall, for the invite and for welcoming me into your house and to your office and to sit in your chair. That was special. You just don't know. Mm. Thank you to my sister, Gwen Hill. You're She's feeling under the weather this morning, so she couldn't introduce you, but you know God has something in store for her. So we're going to stretch out our hands and ask God to heal her from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. Whatever she's in need of, God, we know right now that you have it because you will supply her every need. So we thank you right now, God, that she is healed. She's walking in your anointing, God. She's walking the way that you want her to walk, God. And whatever infirmities are in her body, God, we're asking that you remove it right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it. Like I know you would. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you, God. Thank you, God. People of God in this house, this is a mighty God. I am Sheila Jones Williams. I hail from Richmond, Virginia. I'm a product of the Virginia Union University. I'm a proud Panther. Amen. I have three adult sons. When I say adult, sometimes they're an adult. Sometimes they come back to mama house and take stuff out the closet. Yeah, pantry. Lady Hall, you know about that. We talked about that yesterday. I'm not gonna share all the tea though. Have some grandkids. I'm a Nana's boy. I love my boys. I'm a Nana mom. So I'm a boy mom and a boy Nana. Okay? My girls, I don't fool with them. I'm going to tell you why. They want. Is that you, Marcus? Oh my God. My 
girls want to get their nails done and their lashes done, and I, I can't do that for them because I'm doing it for me. Ain't that right? Oh, okay. Okay. I cut up. I cut up. I'm just letting you know I keep it real. I told first, I, I told Lady Hall, don't look for the withers and the dithers and the where arts and thou forth because it's not coming from up here. I keep it real. All right. Let's go to the word. The word says Exodus 15, 22 through 27. If you got your devices, I know you do. I saw them. You know I love them. Ready? Exodus 15, 22 through 27. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. Then they came to Mount Moriah. They could not drink its water because it was bitter. Say that with me, bitter. That is why they called the place Moriah. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, what are we to drink? Just like black people. Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became fit to drink. There the Lord issued a ruling and instructions for them to put them to the test. He said, if you listen carefully to the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep them, say to keep them, keep them because all the time we don't what keep them I'm going to leave it right there you may be seated mm. I am enough I am enough see only Jesus can take the bitter waters the worst of life circumstances that come to poison and destroy us to make us better. So sometimes we got to be bitter first before we get better. Can I say that one more time? We have to be bitter first before we get better. You see, as a couple, when you exchange your vows, those vows include these words, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, for better, for worse, and it should be saying for bitter, for worse, but it says for better, for worse. For bitter, no, better, for worse. Life just has some bitterness built into it. Everyone comes to bitter waters at some point in your life. The loss of a loved one, sickness, bankruptcy, divorce, false accusations, rejections, the list goes on and on, but at some point in your life, you're going to have some bitter waters. In other words, we are reaping the fruit of wrong decisions, wrong actions, wrong attitude, and wrong words. Galatians 6 says, be not deceived, for God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, shall he also reap. Don't think for a moment that you can sow something and won't come back at you. I'm just going to say. You plant dead seeds, you won't get dead seeds. Don't look for a big tomato bush to come up if you planted pineapples. <sighs> the Living Bible says don't be misled. Remember that you can't ignore God and get away with it. You know, we have some people, I call it an on-time God, but then some people call it a sometime God because you only call him sometimes. Ain't that right, Bishop? Sometimes when we really need the Lord on our side, we really need him to come into the place, we call him. When we don't need him, when everything's fine, when you got your lottery money, did you hear me? Okay, you got your lottery money, you got your Social Security check, you got your baby daddy check, you got your work check. You don't need God. 
people. Come on with them lights off. Lord have mercy. What did I do? Mm -hmm. You know what you did. You didn't pay the bill. A man will always reap just the kind of crop he sows. Our lives are the product of the seeds that we sow. I understand that many of you may not have been dealt a bad hand. You may not. You may be like some people that we even don't know that everything is all right. Maybe your daddy was a bruiser, an alcoholic, strung out on drugs, or might even know, you might not even know who your daddy is. You may have been born on the wrong side of the tracks, raised in the projects, didn't have any money. You may not have had the opportunity that other had. But guess what? You are enough. You may have been rejected or disowned. And all of that could be true. But that is what's happening to you. But that's not who you are. You alone can decide who you will be. When you look at yourself in the mirror, you need to say, hey, I am enough. I don't need this. I don't need him. I don't need her because I am enough. We take too much time trying to fix ourselves for somebody else when we can just say, I am enough. I may be heavy, but I'm enough. I may be a little dark, but I'm enough. My hair might be a little kinky, but I'm enough. Mm. Decisions determine your destiny. Decisions have consequences. I always tell my grands, consequences. I do not reward bad behavior. So you can't do something wrong and then ask Nana to help you out. That won't happen. That won't happen, not in my house. You don't decide your destiny, you discover it. But it's your decisions that you make which will determine your full destiny. Every decision you make in life will either move closer to your destiny or farther away from it. See, destiny is not an accident. It's a deliberate choice. You may stumble into favorable circumstances from time to time, but you won't stumble into your destiny. You will have to work, fight, sacrifice, and go through seasons of testing and trials, bitter waters. You will always have to allow yourself a challenge and you will always have to go through a season of change. We don't like change. We are comfortable. We like to stay just the way we are. Don't introduce nothing new to me because I cannot handle it. Don't tell me to eat this when I'm like, oh no, I don't like the texture of that corn pudding. Lady Hall. But corn pudding could be good for your soul. Could be. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence taken by force. There are so many people in the church, not this one, but in the church who have assumed that the, of an attitude that God loves me just like I am. He doesn't try to change me, and so you shouldn't either. Well, the truth is, Nothing could be further from the truth. Let's analyze this philosophy. Yes, God loves us all. Yes, he took us all just as we were when we were lost in sin. But to say he doesn't want us to change or he is not wanting us to change is wrong. It's actually, actually anti-biblical. It is contrary to the teaching of the Bible, and it will put the Holy Spirit out of business. Second Colossians 3 and 18 says, But we all, with open face beholding, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech ye, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, 
holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, changed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect in the will of God. That's what the Bible says. So if you were already everything that you could be, you wouldn't already be at the end of your journey. You wouldn't be bitter. Look at Isaiah. The reason you're still here and you haven't reached the end of your journey yet is because God ain't finished with you yet. You're still in the process. I remember at Union, I would go in and I would always read, stay, stay up because you're going through the process. And I was like, what process? What am I, what? I just want to go in here, get my grades, graduate, and get out. But it was a process. Everything is a process. When you bake a cake, that's a process. Even when you make Kool-Aid, that's a process. You take some Kool-Aid and put it in some water and see how it tastes. You better add that sugar. <laughs> Make a cake and forget the eggs and see what happens. It's a process. Who makes biscuits in here? Nobody make homemade biscuits? <laughs> oh, I got to come to your house. Okay, so if you make homemade biscuits, we got one baker. Come on, y'all. Y'all just... Okay, y'all just acting like y'all don't bake. But anyway, when you're a baker, you know if you forget an ingredient. Thank you. It ain't going to work. It's a process. Sometimes we just have to trust the process. You may have been rejected, but you are not a reject. You may have been victimized, abused, misused. But that wasn't even what I'm talking about. It's not who you are. You may have failed, but you're not a failure. What happened to you when you were seven years old or 13? You couldn't help it because you were a child. But at 45 and 59 and 65, mm, the life you're living today is the product of your choices and the seeds that you've already sown. I can't blame daddy. I can't blame my mama. I can't blame the church. And I can't even blame the devil. And Lord knows I can't even blame my husband. Because I had a choice to make. I can let it happen to me, or it didn't happen for me. It can make me better, or it can make me bitter. It can make me resentful and angry and miserable. I can judge everything through the distorted lens of my past hurts and disappointments. And I can sit down and cry about how rotten my life is. Woe is me. Because I'm being held by the bondage of the past. What someone did to me years ago. Or I can make a conscious decision not to be bitter, but to be better. And that my future is going to be better than my past. Mm. I can make a decision that I'm going to sow some good seeds in some good ground. I can decide to love instead of hate, forgive instead of hold a grudge, get past and start building a new future with God. It's never too late. It's never too late. A big misconception about being a Christian is that it exempts us from bitter waters. We think because we've been there, we've arrived, we have all these names, numbers, and alphabets after our name. I'm a DDS, DR, DT, that I'm somebody. I put my shoes on just like you put your shoes on. I have issues just like you have issues. Just because we've gone to school and we've graduated, don't make me no better. 
than somebody else. When I stand up here, I'm Shirley. When I take this robe off, I'm Shirley. When I get in my car and go back down the road, I'm Shirley. My family don't call me Pastor Shirley. They say, hey, sissy. Hey, Sheila. Hey, Ma. Hey, Nana. Because that's who I have to be to them. Sometimes we get a position. Okay. That's why people are bitter in the church. Because we get a position, Marcus, and you have to greet them with that position. I wish my kids would come in the house and go, good morning, Pastor Mama. That won't even happen. Marcus, you know, that ain't happening. We have to be real in everything that we do. But sometimes people in church make you bitter. They get on your last nerve. Oh, maybe it's just at my church. Is it at my church? Bishop. Oh, it's oh, okay. Don't they get on your last nerve? They want you to, they want you to solve all the issues. You trying to sleep and the phone ringing. It's 1030 at night. I'm getting ready to watch SWAT. Phone ringing. My dog is sick. My cat. My child. At 1030, what, what you want me to do? At 1030, what you want me to do? The same prayers that I'm praying to that God right there is the same prayer you should be praying to that God right there. God gave you a mouth just like he gave me a mouth. You, if you don't know the word, read the word. But let me finish watching SWAT at 1030. I'm going to get to you in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy coming in the morning. Woo. Mm. People, bitter waters. But you are so bitter, you don't even know how to be better because you've been bitter for so long. Past hurts will make you bitter. That old boyfriend that hit you upside your head or cheated on you or that old girlfriend who left you for somebody else, you bitter. So the next person that you meet, you're going to have an attitude because you're still bitter from the last one. You don't want to get better because you want to dwell on the bitter. You got to be bitter by yourself. Why? Because I got to know I'm enough. I may not have been enough for that person because maybe God did not send me that person. The Bible says, he who finds a wife, a good, a good thing. Okay, let me go back again. He who finds. He. See, what we, we forget, and we go searching the internet, we go to clubs, don't act like y'all don't go. We go everywhere looking for this person. And then, because he's not fast enough meeting God, we go pick him ourselves. Oh, yeah, God sent this man just for me. He's fine, too. He got a job. But he also has an ego and another person. And when the door is closed, mm-hmm. Because why? He who finds. You didn't allow God to help you find this man. You found him yourself. You found the woman yourself. Oh, okay. <laughs> hmm. Somewhere in the Bible it says, the man that you're living with is not even your. The Bible tells the story of Ruth and Naomi. Naomi means pleasant, agreeable, desirable, and lovely. They were living in the land of Moab because of a famine in their homeland. And while they were there, her husband and two sons died there. Then she hears a bread of bread in her homeland and returns. 
She was very well known and respectable woman. The whole town is moved by her presence. They came saying, welcome home, Naomi. But she said, call me not Naomi, but Mariah. For the Almighty hath dealt bitterly with me. Mariah was referenced back to the bitter waters where the children of Israel came. Naomi was saying, I have been through some tough times like all of us. Life has been hit hard like all of us. COVID came. COVID is still here. Just got another name for it. We lost so many people and so many businesses, and we lost stuff because of COVID. And because of COVID, some people still bitter because they have not recovered. That was free. But what she was really saying was just call me a bitter woman because her son, her husband, everyone was gone from her, and she was bitter, so she wanted to change her name to bitter. I just want to walk around being bitter all the time. Do you know people like that? How you doing? Why? <laughs> Have a good day. Mm-hmm. Bitter for no reason. So today I know you know people that's like that at your school, <laughs> on your job. That's why I retired because they were bitter. When you work somewhere for 42 years, that was the only job I ever had in my life, Bishop. Right out of high school, I was like, okay, this is a good job. Got 401, got everything. But the people. <laughs> I came in with a new car, and this other guy that didn't look like me, he said, mm, you must be making too much money because you got a new car. In the back of my mind, I wanted to say something. In the, in the back of my mind. But the front part of my mind said, thank you. Then I went to my desk, and the back part of my mind caught up with the front part of my mind. I ain't been saved all my life. Sometimes they just, <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I try. God ain't through with me yet. And see, Mark is laughing. And one day, Job lost everything he had. We were taken from some place like Louisiana and made me come all the way to Maryland. So I've been through some rough times. Life hit me hard. Life has not been fair to me. I've experienced bitter waters. But what she really was saying is just call me bitter. Then one day, bitter became better. Bitter became better because she married the love of her life. And I know Bishop makes her happy. <laughs> he who finds. This is one of the first lessons of bitter water. They turn their attention back to God. We reach a point where we are not in control and we need God's help. So God showed him a tree. Another lesson is that if we respond correctly, respond correctly, the darkest and the most bitter times will lead us into greater revelation of who Jesus is. And ultimately, we will have a relationship with him. Everybody in here has a relationship with God. My relationship may not be the same as yours. Yours may not be the same as mine because we are all on different levels. But God is still God, and God still delivers. So whatever he did for you, he sure can do it for me. The song says he's done it for others, so he'll do it for me. But the thing about it is we can't come to God like any kind of way. We got to come correct. If we don't come correct to God, he's just going to look at us like, what? I love it when people I know don't believe in God. And they be going, Lord. And I'm looking at them like, you better call somebody you know. Why are you calling my God? 
You don't go to church. You don't believe in God. You don't pray. No matter what I ask you to do, you don't want to do it. I've brought oil to your desk. I've done the whole nine. And then all of a sudden, you're about to lose your job. And you said, Lord, I'm like, skip rocks. But I'm still praying for you, though. But call somebody you know. Call Tyrone. He might answer the phone. But don't keep calling on God. Mm. So let's be honest. What do we think of when we think of making bitter water sweet? What do we think of? A greater revelation of Jesus? A deeper relationship with Jesus? A greater dependence on Jesus? The knowledge that I trust him and he will work everything out for me. The knowledge is what Satan intended to destroy me. Jesus is actually working for me. Mm. To take Goliath's own sword and cut his head off with it. Because what the devil is meant for evil. God can make it for, mm. forgive your bitterness through unforgiveness. When people do something to you, and I know they have, don't be bitter, be better. Forgiveness is for you so that you can walk in your anointing, so that you can walk with God has already given you. You can't ask God for something you have not forgiven the person sitting next to you because you're still mad because they sit in your seat. I've been to a church like that. The lady stood right there and looked. And I was looking. Bishop, I was stunned. They said, you can't sit right there. I said, why? That's her seat. I said, okay. So I went to another seat. You can't sit right there either. Where can I sit? Because they had all the pews. They had them marked. Because people had paid down money for the pew. So the whole family had to sit on the pew. So when the family gone, where are you going to sit? That's just all I'm saying. Mm -mm. Bitter. Bitter. The first step away from bitterness is forgiveness. Forgiveness is a choice. That's why it says they removed from Moriah. Some of the sweetest words in the Bible are, and it came to pass. And it came to pass. That means it was already done. It, it was behind you. Sometimes we got to leave stuff, church. We got to leave it behind us. We can't carry it with us. We cannot pick it up and take it with us. We got to leave some people. We got to leave some stuff behind because it's bitter. And bitter is not going to make me better. We got to know that I am enough. I'm enough for me, I'm enough for my family, I'm enough for my friends, I'm enough for myself. When we get to the point that we are enough, we can walk in our anointing. But you can't walk in your anointing when you don't know your value. You don't know your worth. Mm. Sometimes we got to leave some people behind. We can't take everybody with us because they're not. You have jealous people sitting right in your face, and they're jealous for no reason. Why she got to pray that long? I don't like the way she pray. Oh, she's singing all loud. I can sing better than her. Why she got that song? That's my favorite song. You took my lead. And these are the ones that come in here every Sunday. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bitter for no reason. When you come into the church, this is your hospital. Whatever is wrong with you need to be made right because you're in the right place at the right time with the right God. Mm. They took stuff from Job. And Job's wife was crazy. But Job stood 
his course. He did not go to the left or to the right. Job stayed there. We have some Job's in here. We have some Naomi's in here. We have some Ruth in here. Mm. We have some Joseph's in here that you've already told somebody your dream and now they threw you in the pit because they want what you got. You got to look at yourself in every day and walk around and say, I am. I am. When you know that you're enough, you won't settle. You won't settle. Woo. Somebody came in here today with bitter waters in your life. You need to be made happy. You thought by now that you've had that house that you've been waiting for, that you've been dreaming about. You thought by now you'd be in the ministry. You thought by now you'd be in charge of the job instead of sweeping and mopping the floor. You thought by now you'd be married, picket fence, three kids, and two dogs. You thought by now that sickness would have been long gone and over and done, but you're still fighting it. You thought by now that the grief of losing that loved one mm, would have diminished, but it still hurts. Life just hasn't worked out that way. And you attempted to join Naomi in a place called bitter because you've experienced some bitter waters. Friends, the bottom line is this, church. We will all come to bitter waters at some point of our life. The key is to realize it is up to me and it's up to you whether I become bitter or better. I choose better. I choose better because I know my God can do better. I choose better because no matter what I do, God has always shown up and showed off. I, can, I know I cannot be bitter because when I look outside, I see the car that I wanted. It may not be the car that you thought I wanted, but it's the car that I wanted. Put it like this, it's the car I can afford. So I'm not bitter at all. I'm better. I'm better because I know a God that sits high and looks low. I'm better because I know that in three days he rose. I'm be Oh, my God. I serve a risen Savior. The song says, I serve a risen Savior. Not a dead Savior, but a risen Savior. Let the Lord come alive in you and stop being bitter. Somebody came in here this morning, you were bitter because somebody did something to you. Don't mount to a hill of beans, but they did it anyway. So get better. Don't get bitter, get better. All this week, I want you to say, I am enough. I'm enough. I'm enough for you. I'm enough for you. I'm enough for you. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, oh, I might be heavy, but guess what? I'm enough. I might be bald-headed, but guess what? I'm enough. I may not be able to speak like somebody else, but guess what? I'm enough. I may not be able to pray like her, but I'm enough. I'm turning my bitter into better. Why? Because I am enough. I'm enough for what God want me to be. See, God chooses people. We can't choose who we want. God chooses us. He said, I chose you. I ran. Because I was like, I know good and well you're not choosing me to preach. My family jacked up. I'm telling the truth. And I said, well, what you, what you calling me for? You must have dialed the wrong number. My pastor said, go pray about it. I prayed. Came back. I said, he's still calling me. He said, you still praying? Still praying. I went to a place called Eagle Irie in the mountains. All I saw was trees. No telephone, no TV, nothing but trees. And I prayed while I was on the mountaintop. When I came down off the mountaintop, I could see the glory. See, I'm not one of those people who was locked up or on drugs and found Jesus. I was in church all my life. 
that's my story. I was in church all my life. But still, I ain't preaching nowhere. We be in the church and we could we knew what to say, what not to say. We mimicked. Oh, y'all act like y'all ain't never mimicked nobody in church. And the word said, <gasps> yeah, we had all that down, Bishop. We played church. And then when church came real, I said, oh, my God. But I had to get better. And I had to like myself. I had to look in the mirror and say, I may not look like what you think I look like. I may not look like what you think a preacher ought to look like. I may not even live in a house you think a preacher needs to live in. But guess what? I am enough. I turn my bitter into better. Mm. Friends, never tell people that God sent you sickness, disease, because it's going to make them bitter. Because you're a church person and you used to know better. Mm. I think that we've all seen some people. We've seen some people in our lives that we can help. If I can help somebody along the way, if I can help somebody, don't give it to somebody else. Sometimes I call on Pastor Nick. I'm like, can you help me out? And he'll be like, huh, why you call me? Because God told me to call you. Am I right about it? Church, there are things in this church I know that y'all can do. Don't ask me why God told me to tell you that. And you're sitting on your hands, not doing them. You're allowing Bishop to do all the work. And you have the potential. And you have the tools that is needed to get God's work done. But you're not doing it because somebody else is doing it. You're bitter. Just go ahead and get better. Go ahead and get better. You know you got the tools because it's in your arsenal. You go home every day with the same tools. You come back on Sunday, you got the same tools. But you're not using the tools that God has given you. Because you're bitter. Stop being bitter and be better. Because look at yourself and say, I am enough. The God that I serve is enough. The God that I worship is enough because worship is for real. The God that looks down on me because he sits high and looks low. He makes everything all right. That's the God that I serve. That's the God that turned my bitter into better. Mm. The song says I've had some good days and some hills to climb. But my good days outweigh my bad days, and I won't complain. I can't sing, but I know the words. I won't complain because complaining only makes me bitter, and I got to get better because I love me. Love yourself. Love yourself to know that you are enough. Amen. That's all I got. I'm enough. I'm enough. I'm enough. You may not like what I am, but I'm enough. You may not like what you see, but I'm enough. You may not have been where I've been, but I'm enough. I learned to turn my bitter into better because I'm enough. I'm enough. It took a while for me, Bishop, to get this because my dad, her daddy, used to call me Blackie. I thought it was a term of endearment until I grew up and I understood that it was not a term of endearment when someone called you blacky because everybody else in the family was not my skin tone. So I was bitter about that. I was bitter about that. Every time somebody looked at me, I was bitter. Do you hear me? 
because of what my father said. But my real daddy, my real daddy, my real daddy made me better and told me that I am enough. It don't matter what you call me, I'm enough. It don't matter if you left me, I'm enough. It don't matter if you cheated on me because I am enough. I'm enough. You did your dirt, but my God made me enough. He said, you're not going to be bitter, daughter. You're not going to walk around being bitter. People talked about you, but guess what? You enough. You enough. You turn your bitter into better. I turn my bitter into better. I turn my bitter into better because I'm enough. I'm enough. I am enough. we thank you for your word thank you for your word pastor Sheila I'm not a foreigner to being bitter but the one thing that I can say is that I'm thankful that better thought that I was that I was enough to come looking for me as Pastor Sheila was given the word, because yes, it is true. Life will throw bitter at you all the time. But as she was witnessing and as she was delivering the word, Holy Spirit took me over to Isaiah chapter 11. And I'm thankful for the root, the shoot, and the righteous branch called Jesus. And he came and he met this bitter, this bitterness that, that sit on my hands like she was talking about. This bitter that said, I ain't doing church no more and I ain't doing these church people because of the bitter waters of my life. But long before there would be a Shantae, there was a righteous and reigning branch called Jesus. In Isaiah uh, chapter 11, it tells me that when he came to look for this bitter, to make her better, he gave me the spirit of wisdom. 
the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might. He was the life to this bitter so that we can walk in better. And I'm here today to let you know you ain't got to stay at bitter. Life going to keep on life. Yes, it is. It's going to keep on throwing stuff at you. But you got to know. I think the nudge said it this morning. Who are you? You got to know who you are. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because of this root, this shoot, and this righteous branch called Jesus. I thought it was interesting in the text that when Moses began to cry out to the Lord, the Lord tells him to take a tree and throw it in the water, the bitter waters. And, and immediately, immediately, somebody had to taste this, see? It said immediately. The waters became, the bitter waters became sweet because that's the type of savior that we serve. It don't take him all day. You ain't got to be stuck in that bitter. The earth is groaning for the betters to come forth. So the altar, the altar is open. There is a righteous branch, and he's still reigning. And he's still well able and capable of turning every bitter. I know it, AJ, into better. And so you know, you know the waters that are flowing through your heart. You know the thoughts that are flowing through your mind even now. And I want you to know that there is a branch right here that you can step up with your bitter and get better. They made a choice. You can make a choice. I refuse to remain bitter when better is available to me. So this altar is open. I know it hurt. I know, I know, I know it, it, it was wrong. Everything about it was wrong. But destiny, destiny is calling for you to get better, not bitter. So the altar is open for the bitter to get better. And those of you who have made your way to this altar I don't know what's in your heart but with your mouth you can start talking to God I, you gonna you gonna have to make a decision you gonna have to participate you gonna have to lay some stuff down you gonna have to choose to lay the bitter down you gotta want better so bad that you don't care what kind of boundaries you gotta break you don't care what you gotta break through. You gotta want you gotta want better so bad that you're willing to lay the bitter down, not go back and pick it back up. And so y'all begin to tell him, lay your bitter down, lay your bitter down. I can't do it for you. I'm gonna pray over you. I'm gonna come into agreement with what comes out of your mouth, but it's time for you to lay the bitter down. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you that we don't have to stay in bitter. That there is a Messiah. He became the shoot and the root of Jesse and now the branch and he bears great fruit to make us better father for the bitter waters of of the hearts that are at this altar today or situations and life and things that have happened 
when faith started knocking, they heard you. And their step to this altar shall it serve as a sign. Hey God, I can't afford to remain bitter. I'm here for better. And so as they laid it down, yes, God, we thank you for the righteous reigning branch, Jesus Christ himself. The better. The better that declared me enough them enough so we're thanking you minister deep to these waters I stand before you I know you know it took took a lot to get out of that sea cause bitter can be brutal the memories of bitter brutal what they did, brutal. What I saw, brutal. But I ain't gotta be bound. I ain't gotta be bound. Because you, Father, you sent sweetness in the Savior. And we became Thank you, great God that you are. Thank you. And so, I'm going to say to you all at this altar, there is a language that comes out of the ones who have just received better Loader bar is going to come knocking. You got to know that. But then that's when you use your language. You let the Lord live. Right in the face. When bitter starts knocking back, when the reminders come back, use your language. You got to participate to remain better. Can't nobody do that for you. Steep yourself in truth. Saturate your, your heart, your garden in truth. That's the language that's going to be necessary for you to stay in better, remain in better. We got a part in it. Amen. Be it unto you. Better. Be it unto you. Amen. Sheila, you might as well come on back up here. Thank you. The praying sister right here. She can pray the scales off a fish. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know, Bishop, when I was um, finishing up, I, I saw better in this church. I saw better. There was some bitter. I don't know where it came from, but it was some bitter. But guess what? I, I'm seeing better. Come on, y'all. I'm seeing better. I'm seeing better in front of you. 
I'm seeing better behind you, on your left and on your right. I am seeing better for you, Bishop. I've never met you until today, but I see better. Mm. <laughs> that is a man but God says you can be better if you allow him if you allow him to enter in man of God man of God take your rightful place walk in the anointing God has already given you and stop being scared because God will make it better. You've been walking in bitter for a minute. You've been, you've been tithing. Mm. You've been helping out. But you can be better. You know who you are. I don't. Bishop, I really don't like it when God do this to me because it's not funny. But there is a man in here. You may know who he is, but I don't. He's been by your side. And you know he can be better. If you just allow God to reign in him. Reign in him. Reign in him. Sometimes we got to lay prostrate before God. Remove everything that's trying to get in our ear. People try to get in your ear hole. Close your eyes and just let God reign in you. Let God minister to you. Block everything out. Get to that quiet space and just lay prostrate before God. I And I guarantee you, I stole for Popo Shaka, that you will be better. You will be better for it. I don't stand all around the building. Mm, God, I thank you. I welcome you, Holy Spirit. I thank you for this church. I thank you for these people in this church, your people that you've sent. Continue to bless them, God. Continue to enlarge their territory. God, continue to uplift the man of God, the head of this house. Give him what he needs, God. He's a des he has a desire in his heart. So, God, I'm asking you right now for your will to fulfill the desire that he has that only you know about. God, he has a desire that he has not even shared with his wife. So, right now, in the name of Jesus, deliver it, God. Deliver it, God. God bless his family who is by his side. Bless his help me, his lady. God, thank you for her. Thank you for this church. Bless Zion, God. Bless it, God, with better. With better. With better. Now let us leave this place, but never ever from your spirit. Because your spirit dwells in us. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give God thanks. Amen. Amen. Y'all go in peace.